Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, we have a sequence f sub n of x equal to x over 1 plus nx squared. So for each positive integer, we have a function. So we have a sequence. And we're going to prove that it converges uniformly on the set of real numbers to 0. So first, let's briefly recall what it means for a sequence of functions to converge uniformly. So we say that f sub n of f, f sub n converges to f uniformly on the set of real numbers. This is equivalent to saying that for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some positive integer, capital N, which depends on epsilon, such that for every little n bigger than capital N, and for every real number x, the distance between f sub n of x and f of x is less than epsilon. So that's what it means for a function to converge uniformly, for a sequence of functions to converge uniformly to a function. So proof. So we need to do some serious scratch work uh, to figure out this proof. So we'll go to the side here and work it out. So we're showing uniform convergence. So we have an epsilon greater than 0. And then we need to find a capital N such that uh, this is true here. Our epsilon is not allowed uh, to depend on x. So the natural thing to do is maybe write down what we're trying to show. So we have f sub n of x. And then our f of x is 0, so minus 0. That's equal to x over 1 plus nx squared minus 0. So, And we want this to be uh, less than epsilon. So we're kind of stuck. Um, so one way to do it, or the way I'm thinking of doing it, is to look at this function, f sub n of x, x over 1 plus nx squared, and maximize it. If we, if we can find the maximum of this function, then it'll be less than or equal to the maximum. So to maximize it, I was thinking of using the first derivative test. So we'll start by taking the first derivative. So it's the derivative of the top, which is 1, times the bottom piece, minus the top piece, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom piece, so 2nx. Right, we're differentiating with respect to x all over the bottom 1 squared. So 1 plus nx squared, quantity squared. All right, we can simplify this. Looks like we'll have 1. And then we have nx squared here. And then here we have minus 2nx squared. So it'll be minus nx squared. All over, we have that bottom piece, 1 plus nx squared, quantity squared. That's the first derivative. And if we set this equal to 0, uh, we can look for critical numbers. When we do that, we end up um, setting the numerator equal to 0. So 1 minus nx squared equals 0. And then we can solve this for x. So we could do that by adding nx squared to the other side, dividing by n. So x squared is 1 over n. And then so we get x equals plus or minus when we take the square root of 1 over n. So those are our critical numbers. So the next thing you do is you plot these on a number line. So here's our number line. And um, so here is uh, maybe the square root of 1 over n. And then here is negative square root of 1 over n. And I'd like to use the room up here, so I'm going to cross this out and continue the scratch work up here. And then we'll do the proof later. So let's pick test points and plug them into the first derivative. So a nice test point we can pick that's smaller than this one, uh, I'm thinking is negative 2 square root 1 over n, right? That's certainly smaller than negative uh, square root of 1 over n. And the test points go into the first derivative. So you get 1 minus n, negative 2 square root 1 over n, quantity squared, over, and then on the bottom we have 1 plus n, and then we have negative 2 square root 1 over n, quantity squared, squared. So in the numerator, we're going to get 1 minus 
n. And then when we square the negative 2, we get 4. And when we square the square root of 1 over n, we just get 1 over n. And look at that. These n's cancel. So you're going to get 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. On the bottom, we get 1 plus n times, you square the negative 2, you get 4. You square the square root of 1 over n, you get 1 over n, and that's squared. So these n's cancel also. The point is, in the numerator, you get 1 minus 4, and that's less than 0. So the function is decreasing here. If we plug in 2 square root of 1 over n, that resides over here. Exactly the same thing is going to happen because everything is squared. So this is also less than 0, so it's also decreasing over here. So now the easiest test point we can pick between these two critical numbers is 0. So if we check 0, it um, looks like we get, so we're plugging in 0 for x, so we get 1 minus 0 over, and then here we get um, 1 plus 0 squared. So we just get 1, so that's positive, so it's increasing here. So we have a minimum at this number here, so there's a min here, and there's a maximum at um, the square root of 1 over n, so that's what matters. So we'll have a max at x equals the square root of 1 over n by the first derivative test. So to actually find the maximum value of this function, you take your critical number and you plug it back into the function. So f sub n of the square root of 1 over n is equal to 1 over n, and we have a square root, all over 1 plus n square root 1 over n quantity squared. Yeah, it looks okay. So this is equal to the square root of 1 over n over, uh, and then we have 1 plus, and then n, and then we're squaring the square root of 1 over n, so we just get 1 over n. They cancel. So that leaves us with f sub n of the square root of 1 over n is equal to the square root of 1 over n over 1 plus 1. So we get, I'm going to write this as 1 over square root of n over 2. It's the same thing as taking that and multiplying by 1 half. So it's going to be um, 1 over 2 square root of n. So this is going to be the maximum of uh, our sequence here. So for each n, we have that maximum. So now we can go back to our scratch work, right, which, which was here. This is our key step. And uh, we can bound this, right, x over 1 plus nx squared. We can say that's less than or equal to 1 over 2 square root of n. That's true for each n. And we want this to be less than epsilon to complete the proof. So we have to find n so we can multiply by the square root of n now. So we have 1 over 2 less than epsilon square root of n. And then divide by epsilon, so we end up with the square root of n greater than 1 over 2 epsilon, right? Dividing by epsilon and reading everything backwards. So we can solve for n by squaring both sides. So we get n greater than 1 over 2 epsilon quantity squared. So that's going to be uh, the n we want to choose in this problem. So now all we have to do is choose that n. And we can do that using uh, the power of Archimedes, right? There's something called the Archimedean principle that will allow us to choose our n bigger than this. All right, so now let's finally go to the proof. Uh, I spent, it looks like we spent nine minutes figuring it out, uh, which is not bad uh, for a problem of, of this caliber, right? These problems can take a long time to, to figure out. So let's go ahead and write the proof now. So I'm going to come down here and write the proof. I'll use a different color for the proof. So proof. So we'll start the proof um, by letting epsilon be greater than 0. Okay. So if you look at back at the definition of uh, uniform convergence, that's, that's how it starts. And now we have to choose our n. So our n does not depend on x at all. Right? That, that was the hard part. We had to uh, make sure it didn't depend on x. So choose choose n greater than 1 over 2 epsilon squared. By the way, um, I said that's the hard part. Why is that the hard part? Well, because 
if we if our n could depend on x, this would have been a much easier proof. We could have taken cases. Like if x is 0, the proof is done. If x is not 0, we could have done something like this. You know, x is not 0, so life is still good. And then you can do this. And then you can do this and just solve for n, and you can prove convergence. But that would only prove pointwise convergence, right? We had to prove uniform convergence, much more difficult. So hence the extra work. So now we have to go back up here and just say, you know, for all little n bigger than n, and for all x and r. So let's do that. So then for all little n bigger than capital N, and for every real number x, we're going to look at the difference between f sub n of x and 0. Well, that's equal to f sub n of x. We said that was x over uh, 1 plus nx squared. I believe that's what it was. Let me go back and just double check. Yep. And that's minus 0, so nothing happens there. And then we know that this is less than or equal to um, 1 over 2 square root of n. This is by previous work. So, um, so you, you could say this is since you know, the maximum of x over 1 plus nx squared is equal to 1 over 2 square root of n. So we're doing this without proof, but we did it in our scratch work, so hopefully that's uh, decent. And now we have to do some, some work here. We have to show this is less than epsilon. So now since little n is bigger than capital N, which is bigger than 1 over 2 epsilon squared, right? what we want to do is we want to show that this is less than epsilon. So let's solve for 1 over the square root of n. So to do that, we have n bigger than 1 over 2 epsilon squared. So the square root of n is bigger than 1 over 2 epsilon. And then we can divide by the square root of n and multiply by epsilon. So this means that we have epsilon is greater than 1 over 2 square root of n. Reading that backwards, right, that gives us 1 over 2 square root of n less than epsilon. So let's formally write down what we just did. So thus, that kind of quick, we have f sub n of x minus 0. We know that's less than or equal to 1 over 2 square root of n. And then we've just gone through the justification here of why that's less than epsilon. And so that completes the proof. And that shows uh, uniform convergence. I kind of rushed through that because uh, I can see the time on the video and it just passed 13 minutes. So. It's kind of a long video. Um, if you stayed with me this long and you're watching it, <laughs> awesome. I hope this helped. That's it.